Sammy Callahan calls Eric Young out on Twitter. Diana Perrazzo names Impact Wrestling as one of her possible destinations. Are we seeing way too much of Johnny Swinger? What is next for Sue Young? All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin as heard right here on the Impact Lounge. This is the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Hope everyone's doing well. If you have been following Twitter lately, especially Sammy Callahan and Eric Young's Twitter, you'll have noticed that Sammy Callahan has called out Eric Young on Twitter, which is very interesting. Uh, actually, the tweet is from Sammy Callahan. Real talk, the Eric Young fears the Sammy Callahan. Uh, at Impact Wrestling, hashtag reality is lost. And almost immediately, almost immediately, Eric Young responds by, by tweeting, hashtag reality is lost is a fitting tag. Eric Young fears nothing. Fear is so 2006-2008 in reference to his paranoia character uh, back, uh, back in uh, 2006. So that's very interesting. Uh, Sammy Callahan calling out Eric Young and Eric Young responding. Um, I I think we're going to see Eric Young back in uh, Impact Wrestling as soon as that ninety day uh, no compete clause is is done uh, with the WWF. Uh, I I really I really really deep down believe that Eric Young, especially with his relationship with Scott Demore, will be back in Impact Wrestling, and I'm I'm looking forward to this this feud uh, because this this. It will make perfect sense for Eric Young to bring his sanity character to, of course he can't use a sanity name, but bring the character to Impact Wrestling and feud with Sammy Callahan. That would be fantastic. I just hope I just hope Scott DeMore doesn't say, you know what, we're going to bring back Eric Young, but we're going to bring back Team Canada. And Scott DeMore aligns himself with, with Eric Young and, and Petey Williams, and they feud with the Desi Hit Squad. I just, I just, I just hope they don't go that route, and I, I don't think they'll go that route at all. Uh, that's just, just, just a little, just a little bit of humor on my part. But uh, yeah, no, but um, it's very interesting. I, I'm very, very, I just, just the prospect of that match, you know. And you could also say that, well, you know, maybe we'll see that match on the Indies. But Sammy Callahan specifically. Um, Specifically, added Impact Wrestling in his tweet, so uh, that's that's a clear indicator that, hey, Eric Young, meet me in Impact Wrestling and let's get it on. And uh, Eric Young, of course, obliges and says, "Okay, I don't fear anything. I'll I'll see you there in Impact Wrestling." Although Eric Young didn't uh, didn't actually say Impact Wrestling in his tweet, but Sammy Callahan did. Uh, but it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Now, when you when you think is is Eric Young gonna come in and be the new leader of of OVE? I, I know I touched upon that, and a lot of people are saying, "Oh, Eric Young should be the new leader of OVE." That's that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Another another potential scenario, which I think would be interesting, would be Eric Young coming in with his own little faction. Say he brings in um, Eric Rowan and um, one or two other guys into Impact Wrestling as his own little faction. Say they attack OVE and they take out OVE. And uh, OVE feuds initially. The, the initial feud would be Eric Young and his faction against OVE. OVE wins you know, another 10,000 times in a row to, to, the, to the new Eric Young faction. And um, they go to Sammy Callahan and they say, we need your help. We need your help. Uh, we, we can't defeat this faction without you. Sammy Callahan thinks about it. And Sammy Callahan will eventually come to the aid of his, you know, OVE. Kind of a blood is thicker than water uh, scenario. And, um, and they can do it that way as well. But, uh, but I think we can read between the lines here. And um, almost certain that Eric Young will be returning 
to Impact Wrestling. That's that's a great thing. That's a great thing. I hope uh, the next set of tapings. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw. I'm, I'm pretty sure his when the next when this set of tapings is over, his 90 day um, no compete clause would be would be finished, and we could see him in the next set of tapings. Uh, and again, I, I hope he doesn't don the Superman suit and say I'm super Eric is back. <laughs> I hope we don't see. I hope we. I want to see the sanity character. I want to see the sanity character, uh, in, uh, the Eric Young playing the sanity character in Impact Wrestling, and feuding with uh, with Sammy Callahan. That's 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 where I want to see, and I think everybody is with me on that. I think everybody is with me on that, and I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on this, and I think you should too. I think we're gonna see uh, uh, some more um, t- going back and forth between the two on social media, leading up to Eric Young, you know, returning to Impact Wrestling. And, and again, you know, I mean, AEW, I, I don't see him going to AEW. I, I know Scott Demore. He was a, a student of Scott Demore. They have a great relationship with Scott Demore. Um, if he's going anywhere, he's going to Impact Wrestling. And uh, I, you know, I actually I'm thinking about that the, the scenario with with him bringing a couple of other guys with him uh, to form another faction. Uh, I, I kind of like that scenario. Of course, you know, the trolls will be out and call it a sanity ripoff and blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of like that scenario. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll go that route. Uh, but um, regardless of which route they go, again, I'm going to say expect to see Eric Young back in Impact Wrestling. Uh, most likely in the next set of tapings. Diona Perrazzo has stated that Impact Wrestling is a possible destination for her. And I'm going to read a quote from, uh, I'm going to read two quotes actually um, from Diona Perrazzo. Uh, she said, Impact has an amazing women's division right now. Tessa Blanchard has done some really cool things. Kylie Ray just signed there. Kiera's there. Taya. There's a really good group of girls that are doing some great stuff and that I would love to be a part of. I don't know. And then she talks about possibly going back to Japan, possibly Australia. And um, basically she says at the end that she would love a shot at saying, screw you, WWE. So, so she's she's interested. She's interested in in uh, in coming to Impact Wrestling. She's acknowledging uh, the fact that that every Impact Wrestling fan knows that the Impact Wrestling Knockouts division is absolutely fantastic. And uh, Diana Perazzo is actually uh, close friends with Madison Rain, and uh, believes that she would help get her into Impact Wrestling. Um, again, Diana Perrazzo and another uh, story that I read, again, saying the things that Tessa and Taya have been able to do uh, leaves her more open to working for Impact Wrestling. And again, I, I want to I repeat that she would love a shot to say, screw you, WWE. Even Ethan Page, Ethan Page on his Twitter show suggested that Diona Perrazzo would be a great addition. And uh, he actually tweeted that. Uh, There was a clip of him saying, uh, all we need to do now is sign Diana Perrazzo. And uh, Perrazzo actually um, retweeted that. So the interest is there. Man, if they sign Diana Perrazzo, holy good gosh. Think about it. They just signed Kylie Ray. Kimberly and Navia is most likely going to sign with Impact Wrestling as well. Good gosh. Just think of those four signings are fantastic and adding them to an already stacked knockouts division for impact rest oh my gosh oh my gosh they, they would be hands down no question to ask no argument at all would be by far the best women's division in professional wrestling for any professional wrestling uh, promotion uh if 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 they signed the Prazo. and think about another person who's out there Think about another person that who's out there, Kelly Klein. Kelly Klein and 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 Diana Perrazzo has have had some absolutely stellar matches for Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor, their um, their women's division is is kind of weak right now, uh, but Perrazzo and Kelly Klein both had just just phenomenal matches. And to think if they could bring that to Impact Wrestling. To think if they could bring that to Impact Wrestling. If they could sign Perrazzo and Kelly Klein, holy smoke. Holy smoke. That would be absolutely incredible. Just, 
just 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 thinking about it gets me freaking excited just think and it could happen it could happen you know Perazzo I would Scott Demore Don Callis they have to be um, considering signing Perazzo you know, especially just bringing in Kylie Ray um, you know imagine Kylie Ray against Deanna Perazzo Kimberly against Deanna Perazzo Perazzo against uh, Ty Valkyrie Perazzo against Tessa Blanchard they bring in Kelly Klein Klein against any of them Klein going up against Jessica Havoc. Oh, my goodness, the, this the the possibilities would be endless. You know, the women's division would be the definitely Impact Wrestling's strongest point if they could sign Perazzo and and they somehow get Kelly Klein as well. And I would think Kelly Klein would be would be interested. I'm pretty she's she's no longer with Ring of Honor, and I'm not sure uh, if she's still interested in wrestling. She I don't think she's wrestled since um, leaving Ring of Honor, and she she left Ring of Honor way before the pandemic hit. Uh, so I don't know um, I don't know what she's doing, but man, man, just guys who's listening, just if whoever's listening right now, just think of that knockouts division. If 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 you know Perazzo, and a very good chance, and I I I could see her coming aboard. I. I, I I, I'm thinking if AEW wanted her, I think AEW would have signed her already because she's a she's a terrific talent, a terrific talent, and uh, I really think that they would have signed her already. You know, and because um, she hasn't signed with AEW, I, I think she's leading towards Impact, and I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if if um, in the next week or two we see a lot of uh, we see. Um, Kimberly, we'll, we'll see on social media. You know, Kimberly signs with Impact Wrestling. Nevea signs with Impact Wrestling, and we see Diona Perazzo signs with Impact Wrestling. Good gosh, man! Good gosh, you could just you could just sit down and line up. You would be able to line up, just write all the names down of the Knockouts Division, and just put some tremendous matches together. And it wouldn't just be one or two tremendous matches. It would be. A huge amount of tremendous matches that you could put together. You could even put together a knockouts pay per view with with that with uh, with that uh, division. Uh, should it should it um, should it uh, come to fruition, of course. But uh, and it would be a terrific pay per view. Man, man, just I, just I I hope I hope they get uh, I hope they get Diona Perazzo. and I hope they also thinking about Kelly Klein as well. And speaking of uh, the knockouts, Sue Young, Sue Young, it, like what's next for Sue Young? She's kind of disappeared. I know we got the pandemic, you know, the the free agent. She became a free agent, and she was at the last uh, the the Atlanta tapings as um, as Susie. Um, I believe she lost to um, to Kara Hogan. Like like what's next? I mean. I was I was reading a I was reading a, a, a um, report on report about what what possible destinations what destinations could be possible for for Sue Young. And this article actually pointed out to AEW again. Same with Perazzo. I think if AEW was interested, they would have signed her already because uh, Sue Young's been a free agent for a while. They mentioned possibly Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has a very very weak women's division right now. And uh, I don't know if Sue Young would want to go there. I know they would be looking to build up that women's division, and Sue Young would be a good start. But I don't know if uh, there's really nobody there for her to work with. Um, I mean, she's got a, she's already got an established uh, working relationship with like J- Jessica Havoc and uh, the storyline, I should say, storyline relationship with Havoc and and. Um, and Rosemary, and there's, there's really not much uh, to do for her, really, in uh, in Ring of Honor. So I'm always going to work with, um, who is it, Mandy Rose, or uh, the Beautiful People are there as well. Um, I don't know if they're going by the Beautiful People. Uh, I don't know who else is in Ring of Honor. I know I was reading some names, names I don't recognize, but, but nonetheless, it's, it's, a weak, it's a weak division. And uh, another destination, possible destination that this article said didn't make any sense was Beyond Wrestling. They said, "Oh, she would be a she would be a welcome addition to Beyond Wrestling. Beyond Wrestling 
is is a is an independent promotion that runs out of Massachusetts. So I don't I don't know if if uh, Sue Young would want to make Beyond Wrestling her home promotion. Uh, being an indie promotion, just running out of Massachusetts. I mean, she could sign with Impact Wrestling and and, and they she's not working for Impact Wrestling. She could go wrestle for for Beyond. Uh, it's that type of thing. It's I don't know why they would name Beyond Wrestling as a possible destination ahead of Impact Wrestling. So this this article. This article, um, maybe they're anti-impact wrestling. I don't know, but uh, I th- I think the best place for Sue Young would be, of course, Impact Wrestling. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know she's got the storyline going with Jessica Havoc, uh, with uh, Rosemary, um, and it's a very intriguing storyline and one that I would like to see continue. And so I I think the best uh, and even Susie, Susie's a, a, a interesting character as well. Uh, so again, I, I would love to see Sue Young resign with Impact Wrestling, and of course, you know her husband Rich Swan is there, uh, so it makes things. Uh, unless she doesn't want to work with her husband, doesn't want to see her husband twenty four seven. I know if me if I'm working, I don't want to work with my wife. Uh, but but they've they've been together. I think I think, uh, I think uh, Rich Swan working uh, for Impact Wrestling would be um, would be a big plus for Sue Young. Uh, so um, I I don't see her signing or anywhere else. I see her re- making a return to to um, Impact Wrestling and and to think if they get Ed Perazzo, get Kelly Klein, and then Sue Young comes back, whew, unbelievable, unbelievable knockouts division. So we have the Norths versus the Creeps. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this again uh, because Impact Wrestling, the social media. Let's talk about the social media. The social media seems to be like they're they're continuing the joke you know their impact wrestling as they call it they were calling the match a five-star must-see match you know they were joking about it but five-star must-see match uh, i know the the initial uh, segment was was a joke was a comedy bit and impact wrestling social media is basically they're they're continuing the joke on social media shouldn't shouldn't they be upset shouldn't they be upset and not wanted to continue the joke and haha the whole thing's funny and we're going to be funny too. Shouldn't they be upset with the North? Shouldn't this shouldn't should the storyline be Scott Demore and Don Callis are upset with the North for choosing the creeps as as their as their opponents in this segment? You know that they made a mockery of Impact Wrestling by by doing this. Should, shouldn't 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 that be the storyline? Shouldn't social media say how dare the North? You know, make a mockery out of out of Impact Wrestling, or or Scott Demore, you know, you know, tweeting, you know, the North making a mockery of of Impact Wrestling. They're not going to get away with this. I'm going to meet with Impact Management and we're going to come up with something, you know. And then and then film a video saying that um, I don't know that the North they don't get to choose their opponents. Impact Wrestling gets to choose their opponents. Uh, so the next time. That Impact Wrestling, that I'm sorry, that the North defends their title. It's going to be against po- opponents that we choose. Wouldn't that make more sense? Wouldn't that make more sense for the social media the, or, or Scott Demore or, or Don Callis to get involved there? Wouldn't that make more sense? I think that would, that would, that would definitely make more sense. Instead of instead of having social media say, "Well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna joke around." Also, you know, I don't know the social media. They don't are they wrestling fans? Do they not get it? I, I just it didn't it didn't make sense. It, it was it was a joke of a segment, and um, I, I this 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 should this should get Impact Wrestling management upset. I'm sorry, and and the North is defending the title again uh, this Tuesday. They are defending the title again this, this Tuesday, and I'm I'm hoping that we're not going to get another joke. I'm fingers are crossed that we're not going to get another similar segment with with a with an amped up George the Iceman of Destiny Wrestling, just um just going nuts and speaking at the top of his lungs and and uh, and then the North come out and the whole thing is just another joke segment where they bring out either the creeps again for a rematch or 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 another joke tag team I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that another joke tag team comes out and but Scott Demore is there as well and like I said says nope you don't get to choose your opponents we're choosing your opponents and and 
TDT comes out, a real tag team. TDT comes out to challenge them, or or Halal Beefcake, or or Aiden Prince and Brent Banks, or or Sabotage, or, or or any other real team that they put together to take on the North and have an actual match. I I hope it's not. I hope it's not another uh, another joke segment because. I don't know. I just I don't I I didn't like the segment. But anyway, I I've been over that in the last uh, in the last podcast. Yeah, uh, and and they put it up as a must see moment. That's another thing. Impact Wrestling, they put it up as another. They have their top five must see moments, and number five was the North North versus the Creeps. This was not a must see moment. You know, yeah, yeah, the top five must-see moments was also at the, uh, Triple XL against OVE. They say um, OVE uh, continues their downward spiral without Sammy. Really? They continue their downward spiral without Sammy? They've been on a downward spiral for the last year. I don't think they've won a match for an over a year with Sammy, with or without Sammy. So it's not a downward spiral without Sammy. Uh, but anyway, that, that was... Um, that was uh, on the must-see moment list. Wasn't a must-see moment. Uh, they also, what else did they have? Suicide versus um, Johnny Swinger. We're going to talk about Johnny Swinger in a second. Uh, that really wasn't a must-see moment. The only really must-see moments, I think, were Elgin Sh- the Elgin Shamrock Callahan segments. You know, that was almost a must- must-see moment. But then Ace Austin uh, against, um, against uh, Bay against Willie Mack uh, for the X Division Championship. Uh, that was a that was a must see moment. That was a terrific match. Uh, that was number one, and that that deserved to be up there. Uh, but but North vs. the Creeps was not a must see moment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It definitely was about definitely was not a must see moment. And then they're like OVE OVE falls apart against Triple XL. <laughs> Man, they're 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 pl- they're they're pl- plugging it now that OVE is is um is losing because they don't have the the leadership of Sammy Callahan. Yeah, that's that's why they've been losing. Sammy Callahan officially broke away from them a week ago, but they're saying, "Oh, they're on a downward spiral because they don't have the leadership of Sammy Callahan." Just, I I disagree. It's 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 been going on for for longer than that. Which, by the way, I feel that Man Man Fulton is going to get to the finals of the number one contenders tournament, and that that remains to be seen. We'll see if that happens. If my prediction comes true, but I I feel that. Um, that that downward spiral is going to end with um with um Man Man Fulton winning uh, not winning but getting to the finals of the number one contenders tournament and I wouldn't be surprised if he actually wins that tournament that would be fantastic if he wins um okay let's talk about Johnny Swinger let's talk about Johnny Swinger Johnny Swinger his character is his lighthearted character you know, he's actually Johnny Swinger, as I said in the last podcast. He should have been, should have been Johnny Swinger against the Creeps, not not the North. Uh, but uh, Johnny Swinger, lighthearted character. You know, nothing against Johnny Swinger. You know, he adds a little comic relief. But I think he's in way way too many segments. I don't know if he's the booker, or if he's the booker, and he's booking himself in all these segments. Uh, but he's in the matches. He's at least he's the co-host of locker room talk. Why is he there with Madison Rain? What is the point of having Johnny Swinger in those segments? He's not really adding any anything to it. It's it's a Madison Rain interview show. Why is Johnny Swinger there? Who whose idea was it to put Johnny Swinger uh, in that segment? Uh, permanently, I can understand if he showed up once, but he's he's the permanent co-host of that of that show, and I I don't know why. And then and then after the permanent after the, after the locker room talk, we see Johnny Swinger, and then the next segment is him against Suicide. Uh, so there we see Johnny Swinger again. And and if you go on, what's coming up next week for Impact Wrestling? Chris Bay. Is standing with Johnny Swinger and is saying, "Hey, hey, Swinger, wh- why is Willie Mack dissing you?" And Swinger's like, "He's dissing me." So they're leading up. <laughs> they're leading up to a Willie Mack Johnny Swinger feud, and I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why. Why are we gonna? Why? Why? Why are we getting a Willie Mack Johnny Swinger feud? Uh, it should be Willie Mack. It should, Chris Bay should be. You know, we we still might get that, but there are other wrestlers that that I think you could put in Johnny Swinger's position to be feuding or to be 
challenging going after the X Division title that Willie Mack holds. Why is it Johnny Swinger? And and there you know throughout the show, you know, Johnny Swinger is popping up here, popping up there. Again, I don't. I, is is he the Booker? Is he booking himself in all these segments? I I know there was um there was a small promotion in the Maritimes. Uh, called Wrestle Center, they're defunct now, uh, but they had their TV show, and the producer whose name escapes me, I, I can't remember the booker or the producer, um, his name escapes me, uh, but he was, um, it wasn't Jason, it was, um, but anyway, his name escapes me, but because he was uh, the producer, one of the producers, he would, on the TV show, he would put himself in every single sketch, and it was just, what the f- what the f is going on? Every single scene, every single segment, I'm seeing this guy, and it's getting annoying. And it seems to be, and I'm trying to swing this out in every segment, but it's like in every third segment, it seems, and it's getting very, very, very annoying. It's like, why is Johnny? Why is Johnny Swinger popping up? I mean, I okay, you want comic relief? You know, it might be funny that Johnny Swinger. You might think it's funny that Johnny Swinger is popping up and and um, acting like a goofball, but. Uh, enough. We don't. We don't need to see Johnny Swinger so much. There are other wrestlers that you could, you know, put in segments. It doesn't like uh, Rohit Raju. I'd rather see him two or three times uh, during uh, during um, during the show. But Johnny Swinger being used way way too much, in my opinion, way way too much. No, don't get me wrong. I got nothing against Johnny Swinger. Uh, when he's in the ring, you know, the suicide match, he's entertaining. He could be entertaining, but there's entertainment and then there's overkill and there's just 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 gets to a point where you're just gonna get really tired of seeing him uh in in every third sketch i mean locker room talk with madison rain i'm gonna go back to that what does he add i mean what what does he add to the segment he doesn't add anything to the segment the segment is madison rain interviewing wrestlers in the locker room that's fine but why does johnny swinger have to be his sitting on the couch why does he have to be sitting on the couch and and pop in with with trying to be witty with a with a with a with a one-liner here and there it doesn't add to it it doesn't add to it all right um what else we got here what else did i want to discuss uh oh yeah Imp- going back to impact wrestling social media let's go back to impact wrestling social media um they had uh, on facebook they uh, they put up on the social media. Uh, it was a post that said, "Can suicide return to the top of the X division?" Fine, that's fine. You know, legitimate question. Can suicide return to the top of the X division? But if you scroll down, if you scroll down from that post, there's another there there there's another post put up by Impact Wrestling social media that says, "Moose defends a TNA title against suicide." Okay, so if Moose is defending the Impact, I'm sorry, the TNA title against Suicide on Tuesday, why, if you scroll up, they're questioning whether or not Suicide can return to the top of the X Division. Shouldn't they be promoting that match? Shouldn't they be saying, can Suicide defeat Moose for the TNA title? Isn't that the, isn't that what they should be saying? Instead of saying, oh, can can suicide return to the top of the X division? So, prim- but basically, you're saying that suicide has no shot at beating Moose for the TNA uh, heavyweight championship. So maybe he could return to the X division. That that's the message I'm getting from it. Uh, but there's a match coming up. You know, Moose is gonna win for sure. There's no there's no question that Moose is not gonna beat suicide. But but promote it as that as well. Maybe suicide has a shot. You know, make it seem interesting. The, the, does suicide have a chance against Moose? You know, put a little suicide package up there. You know, but but instead, you know, it's it there. There, the message they're getting across is, oh, suicide has no shot at beating Moose. So uh, maybe he could get back to the top of the X division. That's 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 the message that they're putting out there. That's the message that they're putting out there. And uh, I I want to talk about um, there was a a troll. Uh, and he posted something that I want to discuss a little bit. And um, it was uh, Chris Bay. Uh, there was a picture of Chris Bay. It's a Chris Bay post. And uh, this guy. And again, I I don't say any names because I don't want to. I don't want to say anybody's names. You know, when I'm doing the podcast, I don't want any of you any of you guys going after um 
going <laughs> going after these people. So I, I keep the names private. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but uh, this this guy says um, I think it was I think it's I think it was a. Uh, the, the post was uh, the ex, will the X Division title be around Chris Bay's waist um, in the future or, or he's a future uh, X Division champion which he is by the way the, the, the X Division title will go around the waist of, of Chris Bay so this guy says ooh it was, he, he spelled it out with numerous O's and, and numerous H's so ooh impact zone clap for this guy we have no idea who he is and we'll put him over. He's, so this guy is is mocking Impact Wrestling for putting over some guy that we quote unquote don't know who he is. Hey, he kind of looks like coffee. Yes, he does. Okay, there's another coffee Kingston uh, comparison uh, because they both have dreadlocks. Um, but but what? Two two completely different wrestlers. Two completely different wrestlers. Uh, both very talented. But uh, I'm not going to go into uh, this whole the whole Kofi thing. But think of what he's saying. He's saying that nobody knows who Chris Bay is. This guy is saying that nobody knows who Chris Bay is, and Impact Wrestling is giving him a push. Yeah, just because this schmuck doesn't know who Chris Bay is doesn't mean nobody else doesn't know who Chris Bay is. Just because this schmuck thinks there's no professional wrestling outside of the WWE doesn't mean that nobody knows who Chris Bay is because Chris Bay was absolutely killing it on the independent scene. If you watch independent wrestling uh, before he had Impact Wrestling, if you watch any independent wrestling, you would know that Chris Bay is, is, is immensely talented. For him to say that nobody knows who Chris Bay is, is is the dumbest thing that anybody could say about any wrestler that gets signed by any promotion. Because promotions don't sign people right off the street. I mean, if I was signed by Impact Wrestling and they said Lewis Carlin is a future exhibition champion, okay, fine. Then I would understand that 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 tweet or that or that post on Facebook from this guy. But Chris Bay, super super talented, and he's proving it week in and week out on Impact Wrestling. Many, 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 many people knew who he was before he signed with Impact Wrestling, and just because this schmuck doesn't know who who Chris Bay is, that that's his that's his that's his ignorance. That's that's his own ignorance and his own stupid post and his moronic post. And if it makes him feel better by posting that, then that's fine. I mean, who does he who does he want to see in Impact? Who does he think is going to show up at Impact Wrestling? Does he think, oh well, you know, Brock, oh, Brock Lesnar? If Brock Lesnar signed with Impact Wrestling, maybe he would know who that is. But then again, he would probably he would, because it's Impact Wrestling. He would probably say, "Oh, who? Who's that?" <laughs> this is because because uh, these are these are how the trolls are, um, uh, the Impact Wrestling trolls are. But anyway, uh, enough about Mr. Schmuck. Don't want to talk about Mr. Schmuck anymore. And uh, actually, that's about it for me. That's about it for me. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Uh, my name is Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit that subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber. You can hear hear us here right on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.